Thank you, Professor Sharif, for your nice introductions and nice words. I hope I deserve these words. <laughs> and many thanks for giving me the chance to be with you today. Our topic today is metabolic complications following liver transplantation and how to prevent. As we all know, liver transplantation is the most effective treatment for end-stage liver disease, resulting in increased survival and quality of life for the recipients. Developments in surgical techniques, as well as effective immune suppressive regimens, have resulted in steady gains in post-transplant outcomes with survival of the recipients reported at one and five years to be uh, 86.9 and 73.9% respectively. With improvements in short and long-term survival following liver transplantation, actually new dilemmas, particularly metabolic complications, and their associated increased cardiovascular disease risk have risen. So one of the major challenges facing the transplant community is the increasing metabolic complications that are now affecting quality of life and long-term survival. So our agenda is simply to answer two important questions. What are the metabolic complications post-transplant and how to prevent Metabolic complications post-transplant, starting with the post-transplant metabolic syndrome. It's a cluster of metabolic derangements associated with insulin resistance and increased risk of cardiovascular mortality. Estimated to be 44 to 58%. The main factors associated with MS or metabolic syndrome are post-transplant diabetes, obesity, dyslipidemia, and hypertension. According to the Adult Treatment Panel 3 definition, metabolic syndrome is defined as the presence of dyslipidemia, obesity, glucose intolerance, and hypertension. And okay. And this table illustrates the Adult Treatment Panel 3 criteria for metabolic syndrome. And this table illustrates the prevalence of post-transplant metabolic syndrome and its components. What about the factors associated with metabolic syndrome? Immune suppression in the form of cyclosporin, tacrolimus, and the steroids, older age of the recipient, alcohol-related liver disease, cryptogenic cirrhosis, HCV infection, also higher pre-transplant BMI, the presence of diabetes pre-transplant, and the post-transplant changes in BMI. And now what about the complications caused by the metabolic syndrome? What is the risk of metabolic syndrome? We have four main complications. De nouveau nafelt, uh, two and a half fold increase in cardiovascular uh, disease, malignancy, and fibrosis. Fibrosis is specifically in the patients transplanted for HCV cirrhosis. What about mortality? This uh, graph shows the main causes of mortality during the first year post-transplant. Other than the hepatic causes, we can find malignancy, cardiovascular risk, infection, and renal problem. What's the role of uh, metabolic syndrome? We can uh, uh, say that metabolic syndrome is a common thread of risk for each of these, making the prevalence, etiology, prevention, and management of post-transplant metabolic syndrome is very important to the transplant community. Why? Because it will survival or the main causes of deaths uh, during the first year post-transplant. In spite, no uh, guidelines uh, as regards the prevention and treatment, but there is a consensus regarding the need to identify and screen at risk patients for uh, metabolic uh, syndrome. Uh, and tailored clinical approaches taken, why? To improve the long-term outcomes. Post-transplant diabetes mellitus, uh, unfortunately, the patients transplant, pre-transplanted uh, 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 have diabetes uh, before transplant. Unfortunately, up to one-third will remain diabetic after transplantation. What about the de nouveau diabetes? We can find that 60 to 80% uh, uh, have glucose intolerance post-transplant, but only 20%, which is 
which is not only actually it's a big percentage, 20% uh, develop uh, new onset uh, diabetes post transplant. What's the risk of diabetes? Why uh, it's important? It increased twofold, the increase the risk of cardiovascular uh, uh, disease, not only this, but it causes liver related deaths and had, uh, has uh, an impact, a bad impact or negative impact on graft survival through which uh, mechanism or mechanisms Unfortunately, post-transplant diabetes uh, is associated with increased advanced graft fibrosis. It might cause late onset hepatic artery thrombosis, uh, as we said, recurrent or de nouveau fatty liver disease. Also, it increases the risk or the incidence of acute and the chronic rejection. So diabetes not only increase the mortality, it increases both morbidity and mortality uh, post-transplant. What about the, the role of uh, immune suppression in causing diabetes? Calcineurin inhibitors, uh, cyclosporin and tacrolimus, unfortunately associated with uh, risk of post-transplant diabetes, but the tacrolimus is more diabetogenic than the cyclosporin. Uh, through uh, different mechanisms, actually, the calcineurin inhibitors are uh, diabetogenic, uh, inhibiting uh, pancreatic beta cell ability, uh, peripheral insulin resistance, multiple mechanisms, actually. Also, cortic uh, corticosteroids lead to insulin resistance, increase gluconeogenesis, and are diabetogenic or causing uh, post-transplant uh, uh, diabetes. Uh, other factors, as this study shows, that HCV infection also, in, uh, that pre-transplant actually, uh, impaired fasting glucose pre-transplant, family history of diabetes, male gender, uh, tacrolimus use as uh, uh, I said, and BMI, all are risk factors for new onset diabetes after liver transplantation. So it's recommended to screen our patients on a weekly basis during the first month, then uh, every uh, three months. And our goal when we treat to keep the hemoglobin A1C less than uh, seven, we have to adjust the immune suppression uh, regimen to reduce uh, hyperglycemia, how to take rapid taper of steroids, minimization the doses of uh, steroids, the use of cyclosporin rather than the tacrolimus and MMF is less diabetogenic than both, than both tacrolimus and cyclosporin. Post-transplant obesity, by definition, BMI more than 30. Uh, risk factors include uh, donor BMI, uh, acute rejection and the steroid uh, uh, use. Uh, cyclosporin, if we comparing cyclosporin to tacrolimus, it might be uh, linked more to uh, post-transplant uh, obesity. Also, uh, not only the, the drugs, but the dietary mistakes, as this study concluded, and lack of physical activity may play a major role in uh, the uh, increase in the weight uh, of the recipient after transplantation. Uh, uh, lifestyle modifications, exercise and healthy diet are essential for management of obesity in our recipients post-transplant, and it's very important to adjust the, uh, our uh, medications, as we said, and trying to rapid taper of steroids and uh, 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 may uh, shift from one uh, to uh, another, as we said, that the FK is less the um, cause any yani link to the uh, obesity than the cyclosporin. What about the post-transplant dyslipidemia? Uh, actually, this lipidemia is common uh, after transplant, affecting 45 to 69 percentage, a very big percentage, actually. Risk factors of hypercholesterolemia for recipients include uh, pre, the presence of pre-transplant uh, hypercholesterolemia, cyclosporin used, and corticosteroids. What about the hypertriglyceridemia? Predictors of post-transplant hypertriglyceridemia, including uh, uh, cirrhosis resulting from HCV, uh, HBV, alcohol, cryptogenic cirrhosis, and post-transplant renal insufficiency. Corticosteroids also can lead to this lipidemia by increased hepatic production of, of lipids. Um, although both calcineurin inhibitors, cyclosporin and uh, tacrolimus, um, are associated with post-transplant dyslipidemia, but the cyclosporin uh, uh, link is more potent. 
through which mechanism cyclosporin inhibit the hepatic bile acid 26 hydro hydroxylase and uh, um, through also binding uh, LDL receptors. So conversion from cyclosporin to tacrolimus uh, results in improvement in both uh, serum cholesterol and triglyceride levels. What about the mTOR inhibitor? Serolimus is associated uh, with post-transplant hypertriglyceridemia uh, and increase in LDL cholesterol. Not only this, but it's uh, synergistically act with cyclosporin to cause more and more dyslipidemia. And this synergistic effect is not seen between serolimus and tacrolimus. And this is very important to adjust the immune suppression regimen in our patients if they develop this lipidemia. Um, this study uh, highlights the use that the use of mTOR containing regimens, uh, the patients will become at higher risk to, de to develop this lipidemia post transplant. Now, how to manage weight loss and dietary modifications? All, we have to know, Bardo, a no adjustment of the blood glucose. It might help if the patient have, has uh, hyperglycemia or diabetes. Statin therapy is safe. Yes, it's considered safe uh, in the liver transplant patient. Uh, but pravastatin and fluvastatin, uh, uh, lipostat will is called, but the trade names, Yani, being the preferred agents for patients on uh, uh, calcineurin inhibitors. Why? Because of lack of interaction with the cytochrome P450. Homa Mufadalina and other statins. What about the post-transplant hypertension? Actually, Rakam Alam a little doctora Abir Fil Imkindi can it paper but I know it 25% on a fact rasah. La hey reported the hair yani worldwide ba alam in kid 62 to 69% to 50% men home within the first six months post-transplant. Um, post-transplant hypertension uh, different mechanisms, increased renal vasoconstriction, impaired sodium excretion, induced by cyclosporin used and may occur less frequently with tacrolimus. So, malitnin mungkin yamelu, alakin more with cyclosporin than the tacrolimus. Corticosteroids also increase the blood pressure uh, um, through uh, activation of the RAS uh, system. Why we have to control the hypertension? Why it's essential to decrease the development of cardiovascular disease post-transplant? This is our main goal. We have to keep the blood pressure lower than 130 over 80. We start with lifestyle modification, low salt diet, cessation of smoking, uh, uh, avoid uh, uh, alcohol, uh, uh, weight loss. If all this uh, modifications uh, um, uh, of no uh, any ineffective, uh, we have to start the calcium channel blockers preferred as first line uh, agents. We have to again to modify the patient immune suppressive uh, regimens, rapid taper of uh, rapid taper of glucocorticoids, transition from tacrolimus uh, from cyclosporin to tacrolimus, switching to MMF uh, or serolimus. Uh, uh, in the place of calcineurin inhibitors. And this table, we have to uh, have a, a, a look to this table, uh, the adverse, it summarizes the immune suppressant adverse uh, effects. And we can compare each agent. Um, it's very important table, okay. Coming to the last uh, metabolic complication, post-transplant, which is a post-transplant uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is considered as a hepatic manifestation of the metabolic syndrome we mentioned. Unsurprisingly, in Manila, rates of NAFLD and NASH uh, higher in the recipients undergoing transplantation for NASH cirrhosis, um, reported to be 75% for NAFLD and 38% for NASH. What about the Dunuvu? Dunuvu, and the patients that our recipient that Mazarash for Nash cirrhosis, uh, Dunuvu uh, uh, NAFLD may occur in up to 43% of uh, the patients. What are the risk factors? Uh, obesity, tacrolimus based immune suppression, as we said, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, hypertension. Um, Post-transplant non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, unfortunately, is uh, linked to or contributes to the increased cardiovascular uh, mortality in our recipients. This table, uh, we can, uh, with uh, uh, a rapid look to this table, we can uh, know the difference between the recipients. Um, 
transplanted for Nash cirrhosis versus non-Nash cirrhosis in as regards the incidence of Nuffield, Nash, and cirrhosis. In spite of no concrete guidelines uh, established for monitoring and treatment of uh, Nash development or uh, new yani, uh, or recurrence. However, there is expert opinion generally encourages more frequent liver biopsy and aggressive risk factor modification in patients, in which patients, in patients undergoing transplantation for NASH cirrhosis. And now coming to answer the, the, the second question, how to prevent. While there is a consensus regarding the need to identify and screen at risk patients for metabolic complications, no practice gu uh, guidance on the long term management of those patients, but the Bridge Transplant Society recommendations on Nash transplanted patients should be followed. They, uh, these suggest an intensive control of glucose serum levels, early steroid withdrawal, and low doses of calcium urine. Uh, inhibitors, also tailored the clinical approaches, as we said, uh, targeting both the L L individual risk factors with features of the uh, metabolic syndrome and other metabolic complications. It's a dynamic challenge. We have to know it's a dynamic challenges, a challenge that requires management and understanding the host factors on uh, uh, one uh, side and also the impact of the post-transplant immune suppressive uh, regimen. Um, again, this table is very important that uh, we have to know uh, the metabolic risk of uh, immune suppressants one by one. So, uh, prevention of metabolic complications requires multiple modalities, such as lifestyle modifications, early screening and identification of com complications, and also careful medication selection and titration. It's very important. It's a multidisciplinary approach. It needs uh, nutrition, collaboration of, of all nutrition, pharmacy, hepatology, and internal medicine. Thank you.